All right. So I mean, Doran is ready to shut off. I don't know if any of you all, uh, any of uh, you gentlemen, need any extra time. He's done with his food. He's ready to uh, press on. Sounds good to me. Yes, I'm. I'm full. I'm rested. I'm ready to go. This is quaint as this place is. There's a lot more to see, I believe. You guys only get to about the uh, the gate, the northmost gate, before uh, well Doran sort of looks up to the sky, due eastward. Uh, we'll do north eastward, eastward, and you guys. Uh, he sort of directs your attention towards the sky as well, and he says, uh, "Oh, what you look at that?" And he, you look up, and um, there's just like a roiling mass of dark clouds coming, coming towards, like coming this direction. Ah, shit. There's a storm coming. Uh, indeed. Interesting. It's been clear this past couple of days. Yeah, you wouldn't think, think it this far inland, but... Uh, uh, so, what's what's the plan, Doran? Do we, which, what, where's the next stop that we go, go to before we... Uh, as, as we move along to the mountains? He says, right. So, next stop is... And uh, let me get the proper name for it. Uh, there we go. Next stop due north is Gromberg. Gromberg. Marked by uh, marker number 20 on your map there. It's that town. He says, mm -hmm. interestingly enough, they have a bit of a small community of dwarven smiths. And being that, uh, no offense to anyone here, I think we can all agree that uh, the work of the dwarves is some of the finest in the world, if not the finest. In fact, I, I would settle on the finest, indeed. Well, dwarves have never disappointed me in their forging. Yes. He says, uh, I reckon I could get a pretty good deal on some supplies with fellows such as them. You know, from the same, cut from the same cloth and all that. Yeah, you turn on the, turn on the charm? Um, sorry a second. Turn, turn on the charm. It, yep, exactly. He's gonna give you a, he's gonna give you a thumbs up and a smile through, and you, you just see in his teeth a bunch of, like, food scraps and, uh, discoloration. <laughs> uh, well, you are a cute one. <clears throat> he says, I am forced to agree. And uh, he lets out a very nasty wet fart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, as you guys are moving, um, that that storm, that set of uh, what you can only assume to be cumulonimbus clouds. Like I'd say, you get you guys get about to right here. Like I'll uh, I'll shift, press that so you can see. Mm. You guys to get about right th uh, there. Excuse me. And above head, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, overhead, you notice that, uh, that, that a mass of clouds, it seems to have been accelerating as it gets to you guys, I should say. Like, uh, like it's almost as if, like, it notices that you're there, and it's moving quicker. Mm. Don't like how it's coming in, Do Doran. How long? How much uh, longer do you think till till we get to shelter? He says, uh, "It's been about twenty-three minutes." Sorry, let me just do the proper calculations. He says, "Shouldn't be much longer." Um, I mean, even if it does rain, gentlemen, you can you can stow away inside the cabin. I'll steer. Worry not. Mm. Right, we'll tr trust your ju trust your judgment. All right. So you get to about right here, and uh, that uh, that cloud is right properly over you by now. In fact, it just like a about there, like a, a couple of seconds move forward, like from that exact position. 
and it just then blots out the sun. But it mm-hmm. blots out the sun, and you know how, like, with regular storm clouds, you can kind of still see a bit of, like, there's still a bit of light. Like, it's not, like, overcast, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That properly, completely blots out the sun. In fact, not only does it blot out the sun, but uh, the temperature is dropping to a quite alarming, uh, at a quite alarming rate. Does it seem to be affecting like the, uh, like maybe the wildlife around? Are we hear, can we hear? Is there a sudden absence of like bird calls, or whatever? Indeed. In fact, uh, uh, how should I say? The forest and area around you are quiet as the grave. This is the kind of situation that leads farmers to sacrifice cattle to their gods. <laughs> Are omens like this common around here? Uh, Storms? Yeah. They happen all the time. Look, it's just a storm. It's just got a little cold. This, yeah, we'll be fine. Oh, yeah, but we got no cattle to sacrifice. <laughs> well, looks like you're the closest thing. Sorry, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> it was nice knowing you, Connor. You know what? I always knew it was going to end this way. Sacrifice to appease the storm gods? Yeah, weird, right? It was like this exact situation. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, how should I say? How should I proceed from here? Let me think for a a, a, a smidget of a second. I wanna I wanna do this right. I should say, uh, not to foreshadow anything, even though I'm making it fairly. Yeah. We are all in the foreshadow of this cloud. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Doran, uh, he sort of uh, looks about, and by now it's been a good seven minutes into being under the cover of this cloud. And uh, you guys are noticeably starting to slow down as he's starting to lose con- uh, more and more control over the horses. And he, and he starts, you know, trying to goad them on, like, ah, come on! Ugh. Thorn, why don't we hunker down in some shelter until this storm passes? Is there, like, a tree, some trees we could set the horses in the carriage? He says, that's oh, just a bit of rain. Ah, I, I, I've been through storms before. I mean, we, we could probably make it to Kromberg. It's not even raining. And, and uh, he sort of, like puts his hand out in the air and yeah it's not it isn't raining it's just it's just cold in fact is that windy and <laughs> no it is actually fairly still but uh, there's the occasional gust but um and each gust brings a even greater chill but uh, that's uh is there anybody else what... out on the ro- sorry go ahead it concerns me that it's not raining uh rain with no Clouds is one omen, but clouds with no rain uh, is darker, more worrying. Is there a, Can we see anybody on the road or the side of the roads or ahead of us? Is, the, is it just us? No, in fact, it's starting to get like one of those situations where, like, you you know, when you're driving, and you're driving on one of those roads with absolutely no, like, uh, like you know, uh, the, no overhead lights. Like, mm-hmm. like, it is starting to get quite dark out. Doran's gonna ask you, uh, or anybody who wants to, anybody who I guess is feeling particularly agile to... There's, a there's like a sort of, quote-unquote, a kind of glove box inside the, uh, the cabin. Underneath the, uh, the window. Like, yeah, there's, like, you know, the window that, uh, lets you talk to the driver? Mm-hmm. From within? Like, uh, there's a glove box on the... Uh, on the uh, on the sort of on the ceiling that have the uh, blinders for the horses so they don't have to like look around or whatever so he asks you to get those uh, okay here you go <laughs> so you, you slip in and you notice uh that you know uh that sort of uh bits of frost are starting to collect on the windows it is really cold out there all of a sudden. I'm gonna grab, hold tight to my quarter staff and 
I guess, hunch my cloak over a little more. Do, do, do you need me to put them on? Do you need me to help you put them on? Uh, and I don't know if you can. No, he says, yes, if you would be so, uh, if you'd be so kind, as you say. All right. Yeah, he's going to stop. He's going to stop on the side of the road for a bit. And uh, by now, you guys can see your, you know, your breaths in the wind. We're stopping. Yeah, I'm just going to take uh, like a little... I'm going to stand on top of the carriage just to keep a little look lookout because this uh, this dark, dark in the middle of the day to have it so dark and cold, it's it's getting it's getting to me. I'm nervous about it. This is one of the more fascinating weather phenomenons I've experienced. Yeah, and, it's uh, a little weird. Marlo's going to sort of mutter something to himself in, in Sylvan and then Take a look around and see if you can really glean anything about this storm. He's assuming it's uh, magical in nature. Uh, roll our Okay, so since you said it first, Connor, why don't you roll Perception? And then Marlo, uh -huh. you roll Arcana. Okay, that's 14. Oh, right. did I? Did it, oh, it worked, did it? <laughs> no, it worked first time. Yeah, it's, you got okay. Something. Give myself a, a guidance and... Roll a good old fashioned four. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, there uh, we go. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, the Arcana roll fails. That was. Uh, uh, well, oh, wait, um, damn, I guess we didn't agree that we. whether or not we were doing, like, nat ones on skill checks. I say yes. Do nat ones on skill checks, because sometimes, no matter how good you are, you're gonna. You you screw up. So then can you crit on a skill check? Yes. No. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, for this moment, since we didn't really take into the consideration, I will say, um, I won't take into account, but just for the future reference, because I I sometimes forget that that's like a, a like a, a point of contention for some people. Yeah, I always do it that way, and then I always have players who are like, well, technically you can't crit fail a skill check. <laughs> Eh, you know, it's the, the flare of the, 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 the flare of the D20 you're landing on its highest or lowest, uh, you know, all that mm -hmm. good stuff. But, uh, that is a, uh, seven. <laughs> so, unfortunately, uh, you cannot tr really divine any sort of, uh, knowledge about this, uh, this disturbance. But I will say that you are starting to feel a very thorough sense of dread about you. And, uh, Connor, you're, sure, you're gonna sort of get up on top of the uh, carriage and see... Hold on, this is actually starting to get a little loud. Let me turn this down a bit. There we go. You see on the very top of the carriage, uh, as you look up and around through the forest, um, in the sky above, like, you, you know in the, that scene of the prisoner of Azkaban where the sort of Dementors were kind of flying around? Uh -huh. Yeah, just shadowy, shadowy cloaked figures, wreathed in pure darkness. All right. Do they seem to be approaching us, or just hanging around? They're like vultures. They're kind of spinning overhead like vultures. Okay. Uh, so as I'm looking up and say to the other, to the other two, like, have you seen the likes of these before? What the hell? Yeah, like, like flying cloaks. Flying black cloaks. They don't look friendly. Let's get these blinders on and get rolling. The sooner we're out of this, idea. the better. Yeah, I'm keeping my eyes on those guys. <clears throat> yep. So, Doran's gonna fit the last blinder on. He's going to... start getting ready to vamoose. In the uh, forest as well, nearby, you, act you guys actually start getting glimpses of uh, what looks to be... Uh, light sort of flickering in and out of uh, existence of different color and Doran f uh, fully well, not fully understanding what's going on but it's kind of noticing by now that well, you guys might be in some imminent sense of danger sort of uh, he, he kicks it into high gear saying uh, I'm sure it's fine but um, let's not hang around lads yeah this is keep going G get, get a move on just in the case that you're you know it's not yeah so I look like I'll, I'll be standing. I'll be sitting outside with 
Doran on this, like out, out, out with the horses and whatnot. All right. We'll be. He's gonna crack the reins and uh, crack them fairly hard this time, and uh, you guys are gonna start to mm. heading off at full gallop. <clears throat> As safely as he can without making it so that the carriage tips over, but uh, there are some periods where the road gets a little bumpy. 